Hello and welcome to Fintech Focus TV with me, Toby Babb, and today I'm delighted to be joined by Christophe de La Salle from HedgeGuard. How are you? Very well, thank you. Excellent. So look, I've heard a lot about HedgeGuard over the years, um, and you guys are doing some great stuff. Tell us a little bit more about your background, what the company's doing, how you're helping the, uh, the asset management space. Sure. So I run the UK business and business development teams for HedgeGuard. Mm -hmm. We're a fintech company that works with asset managers, hedge funds, and family offices on various portfolio management and uh, operational solutions. So we were founded in 2006, mm -hmm. so we've been around uh, for over a decade now, yeah. with offices in Paris, uh, London, and uh, in the Middle East in Beirut. Okay. Um, and the whole idea around uh, our work with fund managers is to provide them with the tools that they need uh, to run their funds. So it's a very much what we call a front to back solution. Yeah. So they have front office tools, but also the important ones nowadays, reporting, compliance, uh, and middle office are all included within our offering. Okay, so you basically cover the whole entire the, the entire area. Mm -hmm. The um, the buy sides traditionally struggle with tech at various different stages. Mm -hmm. Tell us about how uh, you believe the buy side can can really prosper from it. Yes, I mean the buy side is I'd say facing various challenges nowadays. Um, for example, uh, portfolio managers now have to deal with. Uh, a proliferation of data that's more and more complex uh, to handle. Uh, they're also facing what we call a new generation of investors who are empowered by uh, big data tools. Mm -hmm. um, so this type of technology uh, will help them harness uh, all that information. Really the challenge for managers is to display scalability. For example, if you're an emerging manager and you launch with 50 million uh, AUM, uh, investors will expect you uh, to have the infrastructure in place that will allow you to scale, scale up to 200, to 500, uh, etc. Mm -hmm. And that's really a challenge when you're sort of an entrepreneurial type project. So I would say that 10 years ago, there was a bit of a stigma attached to outsourcing. Mm -hmm. uh, but now it's actually the investors who are pushing their managers to outsource uh, different functions as much as possible. Portfolio management technology is one of them. Uh, middle office uh, is another one that we also have. Uh, we have an outsourced middle office offering. Yeah. And it, yeah, I think it's a smart thing to do because managers now have access to open architecture uh, platforms that are nimble, flexible, uh, you know, it's more cost efficient for managers mm. and they can quickly access uh, the new developments that are available in the space. Yeah. You, you mentioned something quite interesting there in cost efficiency. Yes. And that's always been something which has been on, on, on the lips of it. Tell us a little bit more how that works. Well, I mean, nowadays, uh, if you're launching a, a hedge fund, um, I would say the barriers to entry have been increased quite significantly. Mm. Uh, be it, you know, your regulatory setup, um, uh, you know, compliance, uh, the costs that are involved with all the operational aspects, it, it's quite hefty. Mm -hmm. But as I said, if you're if you're able to outsource that to specialists in the sector who can, you know, provide economies of scale uh, and bring their expertise to the table and sort of help you, will join you in a journey of building your business. I think it's quite uh, quite interesting. Yeah, absolutely. We've we've also seen a brave new world emerge with uh, you know the rise of ICOs and crypto and such. Sure. Like. Tell us a little bit more about what you're doing and, and, and your involvement in that space. Yes. So we uh, over the past year we've been working with uh, crypto hedge funds mm -hmm. on developing a portfolio management system that has uh, crypto specific uh, functionalities. I think the space is very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, it's very refreshing to see uh, a new wave of entrepreneurship entering the space. Yeah. So you have people who are from the buy side who are now launching crypto hedge funds. Yeah. But you have other people from different backgrounds who you know uh, have invested in crypto, have a good understanding of its potential, yeah. and are, who are also uh, launching funds. So I think that's um, that's quite uh, quite an interesting thing to see. Yeah. Um, going forward, because um, it's not just that space, isn't it? Sorry to interrupt. Not but, it, but there's, there's so many. Um, you know, I, I see it all the time with with ICOs being launched from all sorts of different areas. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's uh, it seems a sort of very different world. In, in, in that it sense. is a, a more different, fragmented. It's it, it is well. First of all, there's one thing I would say: it's a different world from the world of finance. Yeah. Um, and I also think there's a bit of a an unhealthy reflex in the market of linking the future of that or the the future or the health of that industry to the price of Bitcoin. Yeah. So those are, in my view, two things that have to be separated. Yeah. Now from the from the, the fund, uh, crypto fund uh, front, uh, we're seeing some really interesting things. At first, there were new vehicles that were launched that were there to give access to this new asset class. Yeah. We're now seeing proper 
hedge fund type strategies that are being rolled out. So be it systematic, uh, you know, more fundamental with sort of the VC approach, investing in tokens, mm. um, and also arbitrage type uh, strategies. Mm. On the traditional hedge fund front, uh, a lot of these macro and multi-strategy funds sort of invested in crypto uh, at the beginning maybe as a well, in a side pocket and a bit yeah. of, as a hobby, yeah. but that small side pocket became much bigger yeah. with, with uh, last year's rally in price, yeah. and now they're focusing much more on how to gain access yeah. to this uh, new asset class. You, you mentioned the, the, the sort of rally last year mm -hmm. as well, um, and obviously it's not been quite such a, a, a vocal year, mm -hmm. <laughs> should, should we say on that. Yes. What sort of impact has that had? Well, you would have expected that uh, you would see fewer launches with Obviously, the, the main bear market we're in now on the cryptocurrency front, mm. uh, regulators cracking down on some of these ICOs. But if anything, uh, we haven't seen a slowdown in uh, the number of new fund launches. Yeah. Um, but you have to th put things into context a little bit because last year we had 130 launches. Mm -hmm. uh, this year we're expecting somewhere around 150. So you'll have, by the end of the year, you have around 300 crypto funds that will be out there. Yeah, yeah. That compares to fifteen thousand hedge funds. Yeah. Uh, so it really is uh, a nascent industry. Yeah. I think people, you know, compare the two, but it's not. It's not really a yeah. fair comparison. Uh, but but to answer your question, in anything, we haven't seen a slowdown off the back of this uh, yeah. bear market. Bear. Yeah. And in terms of uh, the sort of next phase of in the institutionalization institutionalization yeah. of uh, crypto funds, tell us a little bit more about your thoughts around that. Well, it's quite interesting. I think uh, for starters, we're seeing. Uh, a more institutional approach uh, to the market as a whole. Yeah. So you may have seen that some you know, pro pretty prominent investment banks are now launching cryptocurrency focused uh, desks, mm -hmm. which I think will help to raise the liquidity profile of the asset class, so yeah. it's positive. Um, also on the regulation front, um, countries such as Malta and Switzerland have established some really interesting frameworks and guidelines around uh, not only cryptocurrencies, but also you know, ICOs, tokens, etc. So that's also, you know, moving towards a more institutional type, um, I guess, foundation yeah. uh, to build on. Um, but the really challenge, the real challenge for uh, crypto hedge funds at the moment is on the investor side. Mm. There are a lot of uh, institutional investors who I think are interested to, to enter the space, yeah. but they're struggling, struggling to find the, the proper infrastructure or an infrastructure amongst these crypto hedge funds that reassures them. Yeah. So security, um, transparency and the scalability that I was mentioning earlier. Mm. I think those are the big challenges for, mm. for crypto hedge funds. Yeah. The good news is that you have a lot of um, uh, firms that have you know some proper buy side experience who are entering the space and offering uh, new institutional grade types of solutions. Yeah. So it's the case with HedgeGuard on the portfolio management side. Yeah. Uh, but custody uh, was also a big challenge, uh, and you're now seeing you know interesting firms rolling out uh, institutional grade offerings to address those issues. Yeah, I think it's a really interesting sort of phase that it's going through because because you, you you say it yourself there it's that confidence piece which has been so important to actually mm -hmm. bring it to the uh, to the main stage and it's great that you guys and, and various others are able to sort of uh, help provide the solutions to that. No, it's a great thing, and you know, when you look at the the asset class itself, um, you know, crypto hedge funds have a, an edge in the sense that they're they're trading around um, crypto assets that have let's say. 100% annualized volatility, yeah. uh, and that compares to maybe 15% annualized volatility on, on an equity indices. Yeah. So if you can capture the, the right moves, uh, the returns there are, are quite sizable. Obviously, there's a flip side to that, uh, and the big one is storage risks. Um, so as I mentioned, you know, there are some custody or institutional yeah. level custody solutions that are, that are being rolled out. Yeah. I think what will be also interesting is to observe the evolution of the asset class itself. Yeah. So we started off with utility tokens. We're now moving towards security token offerings, yeah. uh, which you know have the characteristics of uh, securities. Will inject more liquidity uh, into different types of institutional and alternative investment offerings. So it's a really interesting evolution that we're uh, yeah. witnessing. Yeah. And what's next for you guys? Well, we're working quite closely with uh, crypto hedge funds uh, at the moment. So as I said earlier, it's a very entrepreneurial type uh, environment, which, yeah. is, uh, which is quite exciting. Yeah. Um, really, our aim is to respond uh, to you know, manager requirements, be it on the traditional hedge fund side, yeah. asset management side, or, or crypto hedge fund side. Yeah. Um, but I think with technology and the different projects that we're working on, the idea is to really help lower the barrier to entry for talented uh, investment managers. Yeah. It's, uh, I think that's a, r a real feature of what I've always seen of you guys, is that there's an agility there to be able to respond to the marketplace, and it's great you're adapting to that and helping companies really thrive. Yes. 
Christophe, look, it's been a great uh, pleasure having you on here today. Thanks so much for giving us a bit more of an insight into Hedgegard and the whole space as it is. Uh, we wish you the very best of luck with it. Thank you very much for coming on the show. Thank, Thank you. you. And thanks to all of you for watching. Uh, we'll see you soon on another episode of FinTech Focus TV. Thanks for watching.